Hello everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you something really useful, a DC to AC converter, which is also commonly known as a voltage booster. This device is designed to convert low voltage DC, direct current, into usable AC, alternating current. So now, let's begin the complete making process. I've used one on-off switch, a 3-pin socket, a blank PCB board, diodes, four 3.7 volts lithium battery, a flyback transformer, a battery charging board, a D88, 2P transistor, a 1K ohm resistor. Once I had all the parts ready, I carefully assembled them onto the PCB. Friends, I've already built this circuit beforehand to make sure everything works perfectly. If you're interested in making it yourself, don't worry, I've got you covered. I've prepared a complete and easy to follow circuit diagram. It will guide you through every connection, which, by the way, I've provided for you in the description below. You can download it and follow along to build your own version at home. Now let's move ahead and complete all the remaining circuit connections. This setup includes both DC input and AC output terminals. After that we'll move on to connecting the four lithium-ion batteries. Each of these batteries needs to be connected properly in the right series configuration to ensure we get the desired voltage output. We'll quickly proceed to complete the soldering work. It's important to make sure all terminals are connected securely. Alright friends, now let's move on and complete the connections on the other side of the lithium battery pack. It's very important to ensure that every connection is done carefully and precisely. Next, I'll connect the lithium battery pack to the charging module, which will allow us to recharge the batteries whenever needed. It's important to make sure all terminals are connected securely, and the polarity is correct to avoid any issues during charging. Once all these power-related connections are complete, we'll move on to the final step, completing the connections on the PCB. This includes linking all the main components, making sure the tracks are properly aligned, and everything is neatly soldered for efficient current flow. So let's jump right in. Now that all our circuit connections are complete, it's time to carefully place and secure all the components inside the main body of the project. For the body I've used a piece of sturdy cardboard which is lightweight, easy to shape, and perfect for DIY builds like this one. After securing all components, the next important step is connecting the main switch button. The switch will act as the power controller for the entire circuit, so make sure to solder its wires correctly, double checking the input and output ends. I've now completed all the wiring and switch connections successfully, and everything is properly fixed inside the body. With this, now that all the internal components are properly fixed and connected, it's time to see the outer body of the inverter. For this, I'm using Fevicol, or any strong adhesive of your choice, to carefully secure the body panels and ensure everything stays firmly in place. Once the body is fixed, we move on to completing the final connection of the socket. This three-pin socket is where the output will be delivered, so it's essential to double-check the wiring and make sure the output terminals are properly connected to the AC lines. After the socket is wired and secured, our physical setup is nearly complete. Now here comes the exciting part. This DIY inverter is designed to take in a 12-volt DC input, usually from a battery source, and convert it into a 230-volt AC output, the same kind of voltage you get from a standard wall socket in most most households. That's why this device is also known as a voltage booster, because it boosts a small voltage to a much higher one, making it incredibly useful for powering AC appliances in off-grid or emergency situations. At this point, we've successfully assembled the entire body, completed all the wiring, and fixed every component in place. For the testing process, I've connected a digital multimeter directly to the output terminals of the inverter. As you can see, we're getting 230 volts AC output. To take the testing one step further, I decided to connect a mobile charger directly to the AC output socket of the inverter. And as you can clearly see, the charger turned on instantly, and the phone has started charging. I'm really happy with how smoothly the entire setup is working. So that's it for today's video. See you in the next one. Until then, bye bye and take care.